Intel's new 11th gen Tiger Lake processors are here. Literally, there's one inside this ASUS ZenBook Flip S right next to me. But before we get into that, let's discuss the new Intel lineup. Basically, there were 9 new 11th gen processors announced by Intel today for thin and light designs. So these aren't the higher powered H series chips we see in larger gaming laptops. I wouldn't expect those till next year. Like 10th gen Ice Lake before it, Intel are currently going up to 4 cores 8 threads here. However, 11th gen has higher clock speeds, more cache, and faster memory speeds. Unfortunately, those names are just as confusing as last gen. If you're just an average everyday consumer, then good luck trying to work out what you're actually getting. The i7 1165G7 I've got in the ZenBook Flip S seems to replace the 1065G7 from last gen, and offers an 800MHz higher single core turbo, 500MHz higher all core turbo, and 50% more cache. What I think is more interesting is that these new laptop chips are featuring Intel's new XE graphics, which they're saying are two times faster than last gen. These results were published by Intel, so take them with a grain of salt until we can do our own testing. But at least the range of games sounds reasonable, and if accurate, it's definitely pushing some titles from unplayable last gen to playable this gen. Now, that much of a boost wasn't really that surprising based on how poorly Intel graphics performed in the past. What was more of a surprise to me is that they're claiming a 1.5x increase over AMD's 8-core Ryzen 7 4800U in games. Again, these are Intel provided numbers, and they've got the 4800U in red, so if accurate, the XE graphics are looking good. I've actually got the 4800U right here in the Lenovo Slim 7, so make sure you're subscribed for my upcoming comparisons. Perhaps even more surprising was that Intel are claiming XE graphics rival Nvidia's MX350. Now, the MX350 isn't exactly a powerhouse, but this could be a pretty big deal if it holds true, unless Nvidia's new MX450 actually offers a decent improvement. This could be a whole new era for thin and light gaming. Intel are also claiming a number of other improvements outside of gaming over both their old Ice Lake and Ryzen 4000. They're super keen to note that Cinebench doesn't equal real world performance. And I get where they're coming from. Fact is, I doubt many people buy a thin and light laptop for heavy multi-core tasks like rendering. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I think most people buying thin and light laptops like this are probably just using them in the office for say Microsoft Word or Excel. Maybe even some content creation with Photoshop or Adobe Premiere. So I would expect higher clock speed over core count to make more of an improvement there. At the same time though, it did feel a little disingenuous that they didn't include any heavy multi-core workloads. I guess they just didn't want to see themselves steamrolled. Other improvements include new DirectX 11 drivers that were built from scratch for the new architecture, 20% power improvement to help with battery life, Thunderbolt 4, and PCIe Gen 4. Intel also noted a bunch of improvements to AI with new instruction sets that would be useful for software that does things like noise suppression or image upscaling. I'm not sure how many people are actually doing those workloads today, but I suppose it may be more beneficial in the future. Let me know if AI benchmarks are something you want to see in future reviews. Project Athena has evolved into Evo, which you might have seen the new branding for. Basically, this is more around user experience for more premium machines. So an Evo branded laptop should offer nice features like good performance performance on battery, good battery life, fast connectivity, under 15mm thick, and fast wake up in less than a second. Alright, now for some more info on the ZenBook Flip S I've got here. I think this is easily the most premium laptop I've had from ASUS. It's an all metal thin and light 2 in 1 device with an OLED touchscreen, so it's probably not going to come in cheap. It's under 1.4cm or 0.54 inches thick, weighs 1.2 kilos or under 2.7 pounds, and has a small 65 watt type C power brick. It's got a large glass precision touchpad that can become a numpad, decent keyboard, and even fair I.O. for a small machine with two Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI 1.4, and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port and power button on the other side. The 13.3 inch 4K OLED touchscreen has good colour gamut, good brightness, and contrast. It just seriously looks great. I've just never had an OLED machine this size. And when you take that size into consideration, I think the specs are looking quite good. Especially if those Intel XE graphics are able to do what they're saying. Unfortunately, this is an engineering sample, so I'm not able to benchmark it and provide you with results. This is not meant to be a full review. There will of course be plenty of other 11th gen models coming. So far, I've seen the Dell XPS 13 announced, as as well as some interesting looking configurations from the professional side of what we know as XMG. ASUS also have quite a few other models, and I'm sure more from others will be announced. 
Intel said they're expecting around 20 models this year. I've already got some other 11th gen machines on their way to me, so make sure you're subscribed for the full reviews. And let me know which models you want me to check out. I'm particularly interested to compare this against AMD's Ryzen 7 4800U to see if what Intel's saying is true. So definitely stay tuned for those upcoming comparisons.